بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين After Allah Azza wa Jal spoke about things that will happen in the hereafter the speech talks now directs into a different or goes into a different direction to speak about this universe that we live in speaks about things that reflect the ability of the creator and that Allah is the creator subhanahu wa ta'ala and the following verses uh, that we will address uh, touch upon uh, many aspects of the environments surrounding the, the Arabs who were initially addressed by uh, the Quran uh, and talking about things like the heavens, the earth, the mountains and animals, particularly camels. And Allah Azza wa Jal uh, particularly spoke about camels because it was, there is a, a close attachment between the Arabs who were addressed by, initially by the Quran and the camels, we will uh, get to that uh, when it's time to speak about that verse. Uh, and regardless of how highly educated you are or unlearned you are, these things are things that you see with your, eye, your own eyes. You see the, the skies, you see the earth, you see the mountains, you see the, the animals. So it, it's not something that demands high level of education for you to understand what is being said uh, and that it, it is or these things are signs of ability and power of the creator of such things. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal directs people's minds and eyes towards them because it's something that everybody can see, everybody can comprehend and everybody can conclude that there is a great creator behind such creation. Allah says, أَفَلَا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبْلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ Then do they not look at the camels, how they were masterfully created? Now, this question is scolding the disbelievers for their denial and rejection of the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and belied him. Why? Because these people, as we said earlier, in particular the Arabs who were initially addressed with the Quran should understand what it means when Allah Azza wa talks about camels in particular. Camels in particular have many distinct features which the Arabs themselves appreciated. Number one is that despite it being such a large animal, strong animal, yet it is so easy to maneuver and with a, a young boy holding its leash will just walk away with it. So it's facilitated for their usage. Two. Despite the great benefits uh, and the service it provides them, it is not expensive to maintain. It's very easy to provide it with food because it eats uh, different things. And the expense of maintaining it is very minimal. Number three, it's a very, very, very tolerant, patient animal. See, animals, uh, camels can go long periods without food, right? And Arabs appreciated that because they saw that it was the animal they used in their lives. In addition to the great benefits they enjoyed from camels, they ate its meat, they drank its milk, even its urine, and Modern science proved the benefit of camel urine. They use camels to travel with or on to carry their 
belongings. Uh, they use its fur and its hair to make clothes, its skin they made tents with, and mats to sit on. So it's like one of the essential sources uh, of life for mankind or for the Arabs at the time. So they should be more than any other people more appreciating to the creation of this animal. And they know that these animals or these camels were not created by themselves. And they know that they themselves, the disbelievers, did not create them. So there must be a great creator behind this great creation. Now, a lot of us do not or would not understand and appreciate uh, the issue of camels because we live in an uh, urbanized uh, lifestyle, right? We live in, in, in cities. We, we really don't understand and appreciate uh, these issues like the Arabs used to. And that's why the, the, uh, the speech in this verse came in a rebucking form, the question came in a rebucking form because they know, yet they deny it. وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ And at the sky, how it is raised high. Now, Allah directing our eyes to the skies Instructing us in the Quran to look at the skies is something that's repeated a lot in the Quran. Because again, speaking about the Arabs who initially were addressed with this Quran, they also appreciate this. Because the skies for them was the source of guidance by the stars that are there. Right? By the alternation of day and night, they know the timings. So they appreciate the skies. And if you've ever been out in the open uh, and looked at the, uh, the skies, you would appreciate why Allah is uh, addressing us and directing our vision to the to the skies you know in in the morning you see the charming beauty of of daylight uh, when have you ever seen a sunrise you see how how attractive that scene is uh, again a unique scene when the sun sets in the horizon it's it's just very uh, glamorous it's very attractive and they enjoyed this day in and day out they saw this day in and day out and that's why Allah Azza wa Jal is telling them don't you look don't you look this at these glittering stars like pearls in the heavens don't you see this you see this every night you enjoy it every night so you should appreciate this and it was raised without pillars. It's standing there with the command of Allah Azza wa Jal. How it's created is something that only Allah Azza wa Jal knows and it reflects His greatness subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for those who are sincere, who are truthful, who are really looking for the truth, even in our contemporary time, in our era, I swear by Allah, if they look at the heavens, if they look at the creations of Allah Azza wa Jal with sincerity, they will help not but to believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, when He guides us and instructs us to look at these things because He, the all-knowing, knows 
that those who are truthful with themselves, sincerely looking for the truth, will see that this is the work of a creator, then Allah must be true. And they will believe. وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ And at the mountains, how they are erected. They're rooted and fixed, firm in the ground to stabilize it. So it doesn't shake and move, protecting the earth from movement and shaking. For the Arabs who lived in, a, in an open desert, a mountain is something that's great in its creation. It's a, it gave them a, a, a sense or feeling of security and protection, right? And when you're at, at a high peak of a mountain and you look down on the valley, you, you feel that this earth is insignificant. It's so small. You know, have you ever been on a, on a very high mountain and looked down and saw things very small? Or when you're on a high riser or on the plane and you start taking off, you see things so small. So insignificant in your eye, right? Well, this is the feeling one gets when, in, when he's on. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, when, when he used to seclude himself from people from the Quraysh, he used to climb to uh, Mount Thawr and seclude himself in uh, the cave of Hira for nights and nights and nights, just pondering and reflecting about the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ And at earth, how it is leveled and spread out. Allah Azza wa Jal leveled it, facilitated it for them. It is facilitated and ready to be cultivated, for roads to be made out of it for buildings to be constructed on it. It's ready for life. It's made their lives easy by the work of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu commenting on this verse said, on these uh, rather verses said, it is as if Allah Azza wa Jal is telling them, can anyone other than Allah, create the camels the way they were created and raise the heavens and erect the mountains and level the earth. Can anyone other than Allah be behind this creation? This is the question in these four verses. Allah Azza wa Jal addressed them in a rebucking form. So Allah Azza wa Jal asked them about matters that they experienced. And in one of the narrations that is, that is mentioned in, the Bukhari, in Bukhari and Muslim, uh, Anas radiallahu anhu said, uh, a Bedouin came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and said, your messenger came to us and he said that you claim that you were sent to us by Allah. He said, he said the truth. The Prophet ﷺ said, the messenger said the truth. He said, then who created the heavens? He said, Allah. He said, who created the earth? He said, Allah. He said, who erected the mountains? He said, Allah. He said, who placed the things that are placed? in the mountains and the earth. He said, Allah. He said, then I ask you, and this is, hear this now. He said, I ask you by the one who created the heavens and created the earth and erected the mountains. Did Allah send you to us as a messenger? He said, indeed he did. So the man believed and became Muslim. The, the uh, argument here was the creation of the heavens and the earth and the mountains. 
That led him to believe. That again, Allah Azza wa Jal is addressing people with things that don't need. Oh, this one is more aggressive. Allah is addressing them with things that are very easy to understand, very easy to comprehend. It doesn't require rocket science for someone to uh, believe that they lead to the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something, again, that is frequently used in the Qur'an to make people believe reflecting upon certain creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us among those who make use and benefit of knowledge. Allahumma ameen. With this we conclude this session. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk.